Hola, I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico. This is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. In the 1850s and 1860s, New Mexico was a vital mix of humanity. Yes, there were Mexican New Mexicans. There were Puebloan people, Genisaro Indians. But we have to remember, the Comanches were still around. There were uh, Navajos up in the northwest, Apaches in the south and the east. Um, the Pacheria was a moving nation from Chihuahua to Texas to southern and eastern New Mexico. Comanches from the northeast and all kinds of people, Americans coming to New Mexico on the Santa Fe Trail from the east. So in this period, Starting around 1850, we start to see the Indian Wars. These are attempts by native peoples who are nomadic and formidable to access limited resources. Americans are also trying to access these resources and move around. And so are uh, Hispano New Mexicans, Pueblo people, Genisaros. Um, it's quite a dangerous place at times. What's interesting is that uh, there had been uh, a peaceful arrangement by the 1780s by Governor Ansa with the Comanches. So by the mid-1800s, Americans were having a tough time uh, moving from places like Missouri to Santa Fe on the Santa Fe Trail. The Comanches would attack them, and it was very violent in both directions. But the Hispanics and the Pueblo people could move freely through the Comancheria, the Comanche territory, because of that lasting peace. Well, the United States, to secure the area, started establishing forts all over the New Mexico territory. You can still hear their names, Fort Union, uh, Fort Stanton. They're, they're all over the place. And sometimes we think they have to do with the Civil War battles, which we'll talk about later. Nonetheless, they also have to do with these battles that took place uh, between U.S. soldiers and New Mexico citizens and Hispanic people uh, on the one side, and then the Apache, the Navajo, and the Comanche on the other. So it's this time period that we get this idea of um, uh, uncivilized uh, Native Americans that need to be civilized. Um, we get terms like savage Indians that have come down to us and are still controversial if you've been paying attention to uh, some of the things that have been happening in New Mexico in the last year or so in 2020, 2021 with monuments and statues. The Americans dubbed the Apache and Navajo people as uh, savages. Uh, to be fair to them, they weren't the first to do that. The Spanish did it in the 1700s. We have documents that uh, describe the Comanche and the Apache, the Kiowa, the Utes, the Navajo people as indios barbaros, barbaric Indians, barbaric Native Americans. Um, that was their view, the Spanish view of those Native communities, those nations. Well, that was the Spanish perspective. Uh, the native groups, the Navajo, the Apache, Comanche, they had their own perspective. And no doubt they viewed uh, how the Spanish acted sometimes as barbaric and uncivilized. And 100 years, 150 years later, uh, saw that in the Americans as well. No doubt they viewed uh, how the American people lived and acted towards them as violent, barbaric, and uncivilized. So this is New Mexico in the 1850s to about the 1880s. Um, one of the more uh, infamous events that took place was uh, the Long Walk, where uh, a U.S. soldier Kit Carson, who had settled in New Mexico during our Mexican period and uh, married a local uh, Jaramillo woman, uh, eventually was uh, given the task uh, of uh, taking the Navajo people from their lands and walking them 
to the Bosque Redondo. This was a brutal and inhumane event in New Mexico history, and um, it took place in the mid-1860s. Um, and it's uh, one of those events that shows uh, Kit Carson's uh, less pleasant and less savory aspects of his uh, character. Um, the American soldiers took these Navajo people out of their land. Uh, many died along the way, and those that survived were uh, treated to very uh, brutal uh, environment, uh, not unlike uh, things that uh, would take place later in places like Cuba and in uh, Europe in um, worker camps or concentration camps. A very uh, difficult situation that was designed to break the spirit of the Navajo people. Kit Carson uh, was also a, a U.S. soldier. He had fought uh, in the uh, Civil War battles of New Mexico. Um, and so in that respect, he was uh, a brave man, a, a heroic man. But we have to look at the history he had uh, with the native peoples of the Midwest and of, in New Mexico, uh, the Blackfoot people he was known to have uh, abused and killed, and the Apache too. And of course, this event. So this uh, relationship between uh, the non-Puebloan people, uh, the, the, the Apaches, the Navajos, the Comanche, uh, and the Americans was a very, very uh, tenuous situation. And it also um, uh, shows us that uh, American conquest and colonization of New Mexico uh, was somewhat similar to what the Spanish had done in the 1600s and then the 1700s in New Mexico. Uh, it was uh, the colonialism of an empire-building nation. And uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's never pleasant to be on the receiving end of colonialism, even uh, if it brings um, new technologies, new governments, and new ideas. Those are great things to have... Uh, new foods that enhance diet. Uh, the Spanish did it uh, where they went, but they also brought uh, a brutal economic system such as the encomienda, and they uh, subjugated the native peoples wherever they went. Uh, they had a tougher time. The Spanish did in the 1700s in the Sonora area. There was a Yaqui rebellion and uh, uh, the, the um, nomadic... Uh, communities of native peoples made it more difficult for, for priests like the Jesuits and Spanish soldiers to subdue them. Uh, but just like the New, uh, New Mexicans, the Nuevo Mexicanos, the Spanish uh, and Mexican peoples had to wrestle with the Comanche people and the Apache and Navajos, um, so too did the Americans. And it created a um, somewhat... Um, unstable area that would make it uh, very difficult for New Mexico to be populated by Americans for about 50 years. Nonetheless, uh, the Americans will uh, uh, essentially uh, overcome the threat of these uh, native peoples who are very formidable and very brave, uh, as are the Americans uh, who are coming to uh, a territory that for them is very foreign to come live amongst the uh, Mexican population of New Mexico and the Pueblo and Genisaro peoples. But this is uh, a time in New Mexico's history that is very, very important. It's, um, uh, it changes us. Uh, we see new people coming here, new forms of government. Uh, there's a lot of different Native American communities who will settle here and become part of us and who have been part of us for centuries. And then there'll be new technologies such as the railroad that'll shape and reshape New Mexico and prepare us for the 20th century. So that's New Mexico history in 10 minutes for now. I'll be back later with a brand new episode. Take it easy. Goodbye. Hasta pronto.